Good evening, everybody. My name is Dr. Chris Bird. I'm here on behalf of the Coastal Bend COVID-19 Task Force, and I'm here to deliver this week's update of our pandemic report. The task Force has two objectives. One is to address public concerns and questions about COVID-19 and the interventions taking place to address the spread of COVID-19 and two is to enable evidence-based decision-making on behalf of our local leadership. There are several interventions in place right now to combat COVID-19 and decrease the transmission rate. People are encouraged to stay home if they can and avoid crowds. It's mandated to wear face coverings and social distance in public situations, especially indoors. It's important to isolate when you're exposed uh, or symptomatic and if you have been exposed or you think you're symptomatic, um, you should contact your health professional, your doctor, and proceed from there. You'll likely get tested and you should try to isolate until the results of that test come back at the very least. There's also partial remote schooling and we're in Open Texas Phase 3 where businesses are operating at 75% of capacity, businesses like restaurants, um, bars, on the other hand, are operating right now at 50% capacity. Okay, the big update this week is that the transmission rate appears to have stayed low after the Thanksgiving holiday. The transmission rate was around um, 1.35, I believe, before the Thanksgiving holiday. It dropped down to 0 0.9 approximately one week before Thanksgiving, and it seemed to have stayed there based upon our calibration um, to, the, uh, to the number of cases that we've been seeing. I'm gonna show that calibration in the lower right-hand corner. You can see that flashing. The black line and points, that's the actual data. That's the weekly number of cases, confirmed cases in the coastal bend. And by confirmed, what that means is that those are PCR test cases. And the orange, green, and blue are the um, best fit and then upper and lower bounds of the model simulation. So you can see that we're calibrating the model to the real data. And in order to get this calibration that we see here, we need this change in the transmission rate going from about 1.35 down to about 0.9. I wanna remind you what a transmission rate of 0.9 means is that for every one person that contracts COVID-19, on average, um, nine out of 10 of those people are gonna transmit COVID to another person. Um, and one of 10 that contract COVID don't transmit it to a, another person at all, on average. So hopefully this continues uh, right now. We don't see any reason to change that um, projection of RT being 0 0.9 further forward in the future. So um, it continues into the future in our projections. The other thing that I think people are really um, interested in is how close are we to um, businesses having to roll back to 50% capacity and bars closing. That would occur at a level of 15% here. And what this line means is that is 15% of all of the staffed hospital beds in the coastal bend would have to be um, occupied by COVID patients for seven days in a row in order for uh, businesses to need to roll back to 50% occupancy. You can see right now and for the past couple weeks, we've been below 10%. Today, we're at 9.4%. Um, so as long as these numbers stay, stay low and the transmission rate uh, stays where it's at or goes even lower, uh, we don't foresee that we're going to um, eclipse this 15% uh, threshold. And that's a new, um, that's a new prediction that, that we have this week based upon the decline in cases that, that we've been seeing. It's a very subtle decline, but a decline nonetheless. So this is the model projection, the, the orange line, along with in black, the actual numbers of new cases per day. And again, these are confirmed COVID cases. So these are the cases uh, that are confirmed with the PCR test. We use these because a lot of scientific literature um, will only ground truth against confirmed cases. And so we, we need the confirmed cases as opposed to probables and suspected cases to be able 
to, um, to compare to other communities as well as to be able to make the most accurate projections uh, that we can. And so our updated projection, you can see there's no more uh, big peak after November. You can see now we're going down. That's the effect of changing the transmission rate to 0 0.9, like seems to, to have happened in the coastal bend. And uh, the new cases are declining slightly. You can see that a little bit better in this graphic, which shows smoother, smoother lines through the new cases per day for each county in the coastal bend. Obviously up here we have Nueces County with the highest number of new cases per day on average, but you can see that this has been trending downwards for a couple weeks now. Um, in the rest of the coastal bend, with the exception of Clayburg and Bee counties, every other county is trending downwards in terms of the number of new cases per day. Uh, and again, we are hoping that that continues moving forward in the future. In terms of the percent positive tests, we're at 30% positive tests by uh, all the testing done at the Nueces Public Health Department and 8.9% of tests coming back positive from the mobile testing stations. Now, I wanna remind everybody that we know all the positives and negatives that came back from uh, these sources. These are not all of the testing sources that are uh, available. Um, CVS and you know the various types of tests you might get elsewhere um, aren't included here. And one of the reasons why we're not including them is because, because we don't get informed about all of the negative tests. Uh, and so we, that, the, the percentage we would get from the other sources is not as accurate as this percentage. In terms of total number of cases, total number of recoveries, total number of active cases, right now we're at nearly 30,000 total cases. Um, we're approaching 27,000 recoveries and we're at 2,369 active cases right now in the coastal bend. Again, these are based upon confirmed cases, PCR positive tests. Um, there's certainly more true active cases in the community. Um, these can be made up of people that are probable positives or suspected positives, as well as people that are uh, asymptomatic or people that don't get tested um, in any of the various ways that, that, that are possible. Um, so 2369 is just the number of active cases that we have right now. When we expand out to South Texas, we uh, selected some populous counties to track. You can see that most of them are trending downwards. Laredo trending downwards, McAllen, uh, Victoria, Nueces, San Patricio, and Aransas all trending downwards. Brownsville is kind of leveling off maybe trending slightly down, and San Antonio is going up still, but it seems to be approaching a, a peak. So um, generally in South Texas, it looks like uh, these populous counties are going downwards or plateauing. When we expand out to the greater Texas area, uh, these are the eight public health regions that Texas is split into. And you can see again that a lot of them are trending downwards. Uh, Amarillo, El Paso, and Lubbock, South Texas, where we are, all trending downwards, and Austin also in that area. And then Houston is uh, hitting a peak or leveling off. Dallas and Fort Worth uh, hitting a peak, maybe trending downwards slightly. So again, um, it looks like maybe um, things are turning around and we're not gonna be heading too much higher than we are right now, as long as things don't change in terms of the way we're behaving and wearing masks and social distancing and doing everything that's required to decrease the transmission rate of COVID-19. Moving on to the hospital projections. In orange, again, we have the projection. Uh, and in black, we have the actual data points from the number of people that are COVID positive uh, as inpatients in the hospital each day. So that's a census. And what you can see is that right here around the week of Thanksgiving, there was a sudden downturn and then a slow increase back up to approximately uh, where we were in terms of number of COVID positive inpatients in the hospitals uh, before Thanksgiving. Now, what we think is this is probably some sort of artifact of um, people wanting to be discharged at, at Thanksgiving potentially, we're, we're not sure. 
but in order to be consistent with the cases, we don't project that we're going to see a further increase in the hospitalizations due to COVID, and we're expecting that this number is going to start decreasing in the very immediate future, um, if it hasn't already. Homing in on the uh, in the ICU patients, this is where we're really concerned. This is where the local hospitals really got strained uh, and stretched over the summer peak uh, in July and August. At this point now, there is definitely the presence of COVID in ICUs, but it's been trending slightly downwards. Um, and uh, in terms of the total number of patients that we're seeing in the ICU right now, it's right around average, but it's important to realize that a fairly good proportion of those people are COVID positive. And so there is an effect on who's getting treatment in the ICU right now due to COVID-19. Uh, we're hoping that if the transmission rate stays at the same level it is now, or we know if the transmission rate stays at the same level it is now, we should see to we should continue to see a decline in the number of ICU patients in the hospitals. Um, zooming out to see the whole state of Texas, th these charts are just like this last chart. Okay, so this is for the coastal bend, which is labeled Corpus Christi on this. Um, trauma service area chart for the whole state of Texas. Each one of these charts shows the number of ICU patients and the number of non-ICU patients um, that are uh, in the hospital right now in different trauma service areas. You can see a lot of them are going downward slightly recently, like Wichita Falls and Amarillo, uh, Longview and Tyler. And you can remember, we were going down slightly, but here it looks like a plateau. Uh, Victoria going down slightly, and there are some other places where they're going uh, up. Galveston going up, Austin going up, Laredo uh, seems to still be going up. Um, so uh, if you're interested in this, you can fr you can pause the video and take a look and, and uh, focus on the area of Texas that you're interested in to get a pretty good idea of how stressed um, the ICUs and the hospitals are with COVID patients right now in different parts of Texas. Moving on to the fatalities, this is our projection in orange for the expected uh, number of new fatalities per day on average moving forward. And you can see the black dots are the actual realized number of new fatalities per day. <clears throat> Excuse me, I wanna remind everybody that the fatalities are tabulated by the state from death certificates and it takes them about 14 days to fully tabulate all those death certificates. So we don't show the past uh, 14 days or so of data from this. Um, what that means is that you may have been reading about uh, additional uh, fatalities in, say, the local caller times or being reported on cctexas.com that don't show up in this graph yet because they haven't been tabulated by the state. Um, generally, we expect the fatalities to continue to increase for another um, for a, a, a another week or two in this, uh, in this, I'm sorry, in this graph, but another week or two is up to um, not too far in the future for us, December 20th, uh, or somewhere near maybe December 19th is the peak. And from there forward, um, we're expecting that these should continue to, greet, to decrease or start to decrease as long as the transmission rate stays below um, one. Overall, we're nearing a, a major milestone of 800 fatalities in the coastal bend. Again, these are the state, uh, the state tabulated fatalities. So we already really know that we've crossed this 800 um, fatality threshold. However, um, right now, what's been tabulated by the state is up to 796 fatalities. Uh, we do expect these to continue to increase. And here in the inset, in the upper right, you can see the 12 county breakdown for the coastal bend. Uh, you can see the summer peak and then you can see where we're at now. Nueces is uh, definitely trending upwards in, in terms of new fatalities per day, but the other counties um, in the coastal bend, at least right now, they're not going up as nearly, nearly as much as they did in the summer and that's pretty good news. Okay, rounding this out. The fall outbreak seems to be receding. 
Businesses are no longer predicted to roll back to 50% capacity. That's a new projection. Last week, we were making a projection of when businesses would roll back. This week, we're saying that it doesn't look like if we continue on the path we're on, that businesses will need to roll back to 50% capacity. So that's a good reason to keep wearing your mask. Um, hospitalizations increased, uh, but they're expected to begin decreasing. And again, we'd be wearing our masks to try to keep that transmission rate below one. If we take off our masks now, the transmission rate will go above one. Fatalities are expected to continue to rise um, and then start to decline within about a week. And lastly, we wanna remind everybody about the changes to our schedule. Uh, we're pre-recording the reports now and they're being distributed the same way they were in the past as well as being posted on our social media pages which are on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Our handle is CBCOVID, so if you search at CBCOVID you should be able to find us. Uh, we'll put these recordings there. I also update slides um, as they uh, as they change or if there's something that's particularly interesting, we try to do that on a semi-daily basis. Um, and on Fridays, we have Task Force Friday question and answers at noon. So any questions you might pose to us on the social media accounts, uh, we try to address them all on Friday. Uh, that's usually myself, Public Health Director Annette Rodriguez, as well as Tiffany Anderson and Jason Lewis from the university that are helping to uh, aggregate and field your questions um, while uh, Annette and I speak. So um, if you have any questions or comments, please post them. We'll be sure to get back to you, and we look forward to seeing you on Friday. Thanks a lot, and I hope you have a great evening.